Hi everybody, welcome back to another SUP Border video. In this video, we are going to be doing a standalone review of the iRocker all-round 11-foot boards. A few weeks ago, we did an overview range of the nautical iRocker and Blackfin boards. This time, we're really going to be looking just at the 11-foots and helping you understand if this board is right for you, or you want to be looking at a longer one or a slightly shorter board. So as we said in the main overview video, iRocker sit very much in the moderate price point between nautical and blackfin boards, blackfin being the most expensive. They really are more refined. They have extra features and fittings that maybe you want if you're a bit more of a specialist paddleboarder. The iRocker is the all round paddleboard brand for most people to get into paddleboarding for the first time or to have as a paddleboard that's just your own paddleboard that you really want to look after and get a bit more performance out of paddleboarding compared to the cheaper nautical nautical range. This, the iRocker 11 foot all round board, is definitely one of the most popular boards from iRocker and a lot of you are searching and asking questions about this in particular board. The specifications for this board, it's 11 foot long, it's 32 inches wide, so they are your ideal widths and lengths to get into paddleboarding for the first time or just have a general all round paddleboard. It's a six inch thick board. All the iRocker boards are triple layer PVC construction, so they're really hard wearing. Because of that triple layer, it does make the weight a little bit more. They weigh 11.85 kilos or 26.12 pounds. So a little bit heavier than the lighter nautical boards that they have in their range. But because of that, you get a lot more stiffness to the board. As we said in our main overview, when we put these boards through our deflection test, which is where we put them on a gap of 1.5 meters apart, and we put a weight of 75 kilograms in the center of the board, and then we measure how much the board bends or deflects. The recommended PSI pressure is 14 to 18 PSI and we tested this board at 15 PSI and 18 PSI. At 15 PSI it dropped 14 millimeters and at 18 PSI it dropped 13 millimeters. So it's definitely a fairly stiff board that competes with other boards definitely at the same price point on the market. Remember some of the stiffest boards in the market sit about 7 and the most flexible sit around 26, 27. Now with all our standalone inflatable paddleboard reviews, we very much review them like you are going paddleboarding. So we're looking at the carrying of the backpack, how comfortable it is. We're looking at unrolling the board, how easy it is to inflate. When it's out in the water, what it's like to paddle, who it would be best suited for. And then obviously when it's packing the board up time, rolling it up, putting it in the bag, how easy is it to do that? And then taking it, transporting it home. So we're looking at the complete package the first thing we'll talk about now is the bag, transporting your paddle board to your paddle location. Definitely iRocker have got one of the most padded bags on the market, especially around the shoulder straps and around behind your back. The Blackfin bag is virtually exactly the same except that has wheels, but you can actually buy an add-on that clips onto the bottom to make these iRocker bags wheeled bags as well. It is a great move that you can do that. A lot of people don't want wheels on their bags, but a lot of people do, especially if you're moving and walking down the road or going from an airport, you can put wheels on those bags. I personally don't like wheels so much because I like to stash my bag and roll it up nice and small and maybe take it with me on my paddling journey. But transporting and carrying that board with a bag, it is a very comfortable, wide shoulder strap bag. There is so many different compression straps, pockets, tie downs that you can compress that bag right down and carry extra stuff in and around that bag nice and easy. And it's easy to get all of your paddling equipment just in that one bag so it's nice to just have one bag, bring out the car and go to your paddle location. When it comes to inflating that board, it's very easy to inflate because it comes with a triple action double chamber pump. These are pretty much the biggest pumps on the market. So they pump on the upstroke and on the downstroke with both chambers on setting number one, which is the most amount of air you're gonna get into your board. Then you go into setting two, which is where when the pressure starts to build up in your arms, you can bring it down to reduce to one cylinder. So take it off the two cylinders onto one. And then when you go to number three, which is to finish off with a maximum pressure or maximum PSI in your board, then you're just using a single chamber in a single direction so you can get a large amount of pressure without having too much fatigue in your arms. We've tested these pumps before, they're made by GRI, they're very well established from a main known pump brand and definitely they are one of the fastest pumps on the market for getting a lot of air into your board. 
Obviously, it will take you a little while to inflate these boards, but with these triple action pumps, it really won't take you very long. You won't feel as tired or fatigued as you would do with the smaller chamber pumps because this is still a fairly big volume board and you're going to have to get a lot of air in that board. A quick thing around six inch thick boards and different thicknesses, you might have seen some boards are five inches thick, some boards are six inches thick. The real bonus of having a six inch thick board is that you can get less air in it and you can have a more stiffer board. So if you had a fifth five inch thick board, a thinner board, you would have to have a higher PSI pressure in it to get the same stiffness out of that board, which means you're going to be pumping for longer. There is definitely something to be aware about of six inch thick boards when you're on the water, but we'll speak about that in a minute. Then you can roll your board over and clip the fins in really easily. As long as there isn't too much sand in the fin boxes, the fins go in nice and easy and clip back. They also do come with spare clips. So if you do damage one of the clip systems, the clip at the back of the fin boxes, you can replace those easily. And they are widely available on the internet as well. We really like this fin system. It seems very easy. We've been using it for probably over a year now on different brands, and it does give you a lot more performance when you're on the water. Now carrying your board to the water. Now with all the iRocker boards, they are definitely one of the easiest brands to carry to the water because there are so many handles placed on the board. So many inflatable sup brands do not put enough handles on their board. You have got your standard central carry handle, which is easy to use if you're on your own, but if you're carrying it with two people, you've got handles at the front, handles at the back, and you've got extra handles in between the webbing straps as well. So if you just want to carry it maybe with luggage on the front or cargo on the rear tie downs, you can have an option to carry it in many different ways. It's a simple thing, but it really makes a difference when you're transporting your kit down to the water. Just before you get on the water, obviously you've got to put on your leash. All the boards come with color coordinated coiled leashes, a good quality leash, look fairly hard wearing. Definitely if you wanted to take it surfing or a bit more heavy duty, I think these leashes would stand up to that as well. So nice leash that comes with a package. Then you've also got the three piece paddle. Now the iRocker ones all come with carbon hybrids, which are a bit of a carbon glass fiber mix in the shaft and a plastic blade. Now, as we said in the main overview, the plastic blade is really an all round paddle blade shape that isn't gonna give you loads of performance, but it is gonna suit all round paddling and because it's plastic it means it's really tough so you can push off rocks you can dig holes with it it doesn't really matter being a carbon glass shaft it's a little bit stiffer than the fiberglass shaft so it is going to give you that much more performance the three-piece paddle is very easy to clip together and the nice thing about these three-piece paddles opposed to other brands some other brands have got sort of more like a, a lever lock system or a twist lock where you can lock the paddle off these have got push pins the nice thing about push pins is they do not twist whatever so it's very easy to Rechange the size, slide them in, lock the push pins in, and they do not twist or move no matter how hard you push or pull on your paddle. Then getting on the board on the water, what is the 11 foot iRocker like to paddle? Well, 11 foot long, 32 wide. You might have heard me say it before, 32 wide is sort of the magic optimum width for so many uses, so many people getting into the sport or general all round paddling. Going narrower is gonna make the board slightly faster, but it's gonna make it a lot more unstable. 32 is that very comfortable width. And also because it's 11 foot long opposed to 10 six or 10 foot, you're gonna have much more glide length. So this board is actually quite a smooth, comfortable board to paddle a little bit faster than the 10 sixes and the 10 foots. And that is one of the big highlights to be aware of on a board like this opposed to the shorter boards. If you're trying to maybe paddle a little bit further than just going around in circles and maybe practicing your step back turns like you would be on a shorter board, the 11 foot boards are the boards you should be looking at. If you're trying to explore around that next river bank, if you're trying to go down the coast a little bit further, looking towards a longer board is gonna be much better suited to what you wanna do and traveling a little bit further. Also being that little bit longer, but still 32 wide and that parallel length it can carry quite a lot of weight. Maybe that's to do with dry bags at the front of the back, or you want to take a child on the front, or you even want to paddle with another friend. This board is set up and can do that sort of thing. But because of its length, the 11 foot is a little bit harder to turn than a shorter base board. A shorter board is always going to be easier to pivot around if you're standing in your normal paddling area and you're doing a sort of sweep stroke around the front. The 11 foot, you need to get your body weight a little bit further back to turn a little bit quicker. This board will turn, but if you want to turn faster and maybe catch some waves, it's going to be a little bit harder to use than a shorter baseboard. 
But because of the overall shape and the stiffness of the boards, they do handle a lot of good open water conditions, flat water conditions. You could take them surfing, you could take them coastal cruising. You can do so much with boards like this. Also, when you're on the water, obviously you've got lots of potential with cargos, bungees, tie downs, action cam mounts. There is so much on these boards. Definitely iRocker probably are the brand that have more of the feature and fittings than any other brand that's out there at the moment. The cargo points at the front and the rear are nice and big. Really good to see right out to the edge of the board. So many brands are so small, they're quite small in the middle. You can't really get a very big dry bag on. These can take big dry bags at the front and at the back. You've also got action mounts or round mounts or threaded mounts down the board. So in here, this is actually part of a D-ring, but there's actually a screw mount in here. So you can attach water bottle holders, GPS, there's so many things, fishing rod attachments, there's so many things you can attach in these points. There's one here, one there, another one here, another one there. So there's a lot of ram mounts or screw threaded M8 mounts in this board. Otherwise, you've got various D-rings right down the board that you can attach shoulder straps, carry straps, kayak seats, extra cool boxes, make your bungees bigger. The, the possibilities are really endless, but by then putting them on the board, it does give you the option to increase those bungees to pretty much do whatever you want with your board, which is a really important thing because so many of you out there are getting into paddle boarding, starting off as an all round paddler, just wanting to start, but then you soon start getting into your own little genre, your own discipline. Maybe it's touring, a lot of you getting into sup fishing, a lot of you are getting in maybe a bit more surf. There's so many different disciplines off of paddle boarding. But having a board like this is a really good entry to getting you into whatever discipline you might like. When it comes to paddling this board in a straight line, which is probably one of the most common questions we get asked when you first start paddle boarding, it's a fairly easy board to paddle in a straight line because of a few things. One, it's got quite a parallel outline down the rail, so it tracks really well. It's 11 foot long, so it's a little bit longer. Longer boards do track and go in a straight line easier, but also the fin setup. Because the fins, there's three fins or a two plus one, which is where you have the center fin bigger than the side fins. They're nice and stiff, and the center fin is a good size. That is gonna give you more straight line tracking. Having the three fins in does slow the board down a little bit, so maybe when you get better, and if you're doing more longer distance touring, you can remove your side fins and just run it as a center fin, but the tracking will increase if you put or your three fins in because you are going to have an effect three fins helping you keep you going in a straight line so it's a fairly easy board to start paddling with to learn to get your good paddle strokes and not having to worry about paddling in a straight line too much when you're paddling on the water you do know it's the nice comfortable deck pad it's a thick deck pad it looks really good with the sort of eye rocker logos all impressioned into it the nice thing about having the groove deck pad which i definitely didn't realize until i started riding these boards is when you do get water on the board the water goes and sits in the grooves and then it goes off the sides of the board so you don't end up having a lot of water sat on the deck pad might sound like a strange thing and you might not have noticed it, but definitely if you paddle other paddle boards that have got completely flat, smooth deck pads, the water can sit on top of that deck pad. So it's a nice little feature. Don't know if it was designed like that, but definitely we did notice it when we were using it. Now let's talk about six inch thick boards. Now most brands in the market, 90% of brands are using and making six inch thick boards at the moment. As I said earlier, it means you need less PSI pressure to get a good amount of stiffness, opposed to if you're paddling a four inch or a five inch, you would have to need more pressure, more effort, more air pressure, more time pumping to get to the same stiffness. The downsides really for the six inch thick boards, and a lot of people aren't really aware of it, is they're actually a little bit harder to climb on. So if you are maybe a little bit uncomfortable or not as confident in the water, maybe you're wearing a buoyancy aid and you're a bit cautious about getting on and off the board it's going to take you a little bit more work to climb on and off these boards opposed to a thinner base board so definitely if you're like that and you're thinking you're a little bit unsure i would start off in the shallows get off the board waist depth pull yourself back on go a little bit deeper then pull yourself back on because having that extra thickness when the board is floating out of the water it's a higher platform for you to climb onto a lot of people don't realize it but as soon as they buy their paddle board and if they're like that you know having a buoyancy aid or a little bit less water confident than others they will feel there is a difference of climbing on a thicker board the other thing about thicker boards is they do give you that higher 
a more elevated paddling experience. Some people like the thinner base board because you're a little bit lower to the water and you feel a bit more attached to the paddling experience. And they can offer you a little bit more windage so the wind can hit the side of the board and push you a little bit more. To be honest, it's only a small amount and a tiny bit more to paddle technique can easily correct that windage, but it's definitely something to be aware about. So five inch and six inch thick boards, apart from the stiffness, there is some differences on the water, but really climbing on and off is probably one of the most ones that you're probably gonna come across. When you finish your paddle session and it comes to packing your board up, it's very quick and easy. You've got a valve at the back of the board, you release that, all the air comes out in one go pretty much. You start a rolling up from the front of the board. You can either roll it around your pump or you can leave your pump separately and then you roll it up. It might take you a little bit of time to make sure you roll correctly so you don't put too much pressure on your fins as you roll them around. Opposed to some boards that have got flexible fin boxes, these are harder fin boxes which offer you a lot more performance, but you are gonna make sure you have to roll your board and fold it in the correct place. But definitely these bags are a nice size that'll easily take the board when it's being rolled up, even if you're not that good with your rolling up. Everything breaks down nice and easy, back in the bag, bags back on your shoulders, as again, nice and comfortable shoulder straps, nice and easy to walk moderate distances. Or if you're lazier and you wanna wheel it down the road, you can attach your wheels and make your bag a wheelie bag. As I said in the main review, I personally really like the orange color board. They do come with lots of different colors, greens, grays, teals. So there is a great choices of colors out there for you. Definitely would have said this about other brands before in the past of our reviews, but at the moment I would say these boards right now at present are the best looking ice ups I think on the market. The way they styled them with the graphics, the color coordinated handles, leashes and bags and paddles they really do look good and i think irocker need a lot of praise because they are a brand that do make a very good looking product so a little bit about irocker they are a well established brand that started back in 2013 in the states in florida and they are definitely a becoming a very well known brand across europe and the rest of the world and a lot of you out there are owning and giving us feedback about your irocker and to be honest your blue fins and your nautical boards they have a huge amount of accessories on their website and I know people that maybe don't even own an iRocker are going on their website to buy paddleboard accessories. A little bit more about the environmental awareness, we highlighted it in the main overview. Unfortunately, these boards are packed up with quite a lot of plastic and I hope that they change that in time. Trying to reduce the amount of plastic on and wrapped around these boards is definitely a very important thing to us. And also as far as we're aware of, there's no environmental products sort of in these boards. A lot of the big brands are trying to do a lot more research and getting recyclable materials into their inflatable powder boards and no doubt iRocker will be doing that in the future because they have a big brand behind them and there's a lot of people that will be looking towards them for them to help the environmental message. Pros and cons and value for money, well pros Definitely one of the best looking ice up ranges out there. The features, the handles, the bungees, everything is well placed, nice and big, designed for a user to actually use it. Having the handles at front and back is such a basic thing, but it really makes a difference to transporting your sup to the water. The 11 foot length by 32 is gonna be so good for so many people, giving you that extra length, just a bit more glide than your shorter 10 foot sups. The cons, the six inch thick boards, you're gonna to have to be a little bit aware about. Remember I said about the point shades, definitely if you're a bit more unconfident and you're gonna be climbing on and off your board a lot, start off in the shallows, go easy, just get used to climbing on your board. But to be honest, there are so many handles on this board, you're gonna be able to approach the board up at the front or at the back and slide yourself on. So pretty much, it's probably one of the easiest six inch thick boards to get on. Other con, it's a small one and you might laugh, but if you've got muddy feet or paddling in more dirty waters, white deck pads, they look fantastic. And I really like the white deck pad, but it is something that does get dirty a lot easier. So just be aware, maybe if you're walking through a slightly dirtier sandy patch to get to the paddle location, when you do start paddling, you're either gonna have to wash your feet off or accept the fact you're gonna have some muddy footprints on your board. Well, value for money, well, these aren't your cheap price point supermarket boards and they shouldn't be. They are worth the money. They have got so many fittings and features that you do not see on other brands. They are worth that price point. People are always going about ice ups being cheaper. You do always get what you pay for. A cheap ice up, a really cheap ice up, you can see it and you feel it on the water. These are very competitive and definitely worth that price point. As far as the features and fittings in the complete package, I don't think you can go wrong. So who will they best suit? Well, weight-wise, obviously, you could get on it as a fairly light paddler, and it will take 
comfortably up to 120 kilos or you could carry a serious amount of weight on the front and back as well if you're around the 95 kilos so it's going to take a large amount of weight it's a thick board it's got a big amount of volume the all round has got so many uses you could do so much with this board you could take the kids out in the front you could take your friends paddleboarding the first time you could use it as just an all round just paddle around in circles around the bay it's not going to be as easy as the shorter base boards to turn around definitely wants to get going a little bit further and cover a bit more ground you could do a bit of touring you could go overnight camping with this board you could go sup fishing with this board there is a lot of options out there for you to get into sup with this and i think this board the way it's made the way it's presented and the complete package really is going to suit a lot of people so i hope you found that subboard review interesting and informative and it's helped you understand if the 11 foot irocker all round board is the right board for you any questions and comments leave them in the comments section below remember if you're mad keen on paddleboarding and you want to learn so much about paddleboarding check out subboarder pro where there's loads of technique videos and other reviews and you have endless amounts of questions you can ask us on ask the experts where we get back with a completely independent answer helping you improve or buying the best equipment for you. We really are there for you to answer anything about SUP. Thank you very much. Subscribe to your YouTube channel. Give this video a like if you found it useful. And look out for some more SUP boarder videos soon. And in the future, we will be reviewing, like this board, the Model X from Blackfin. So look out for that as well. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.